Hey everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if I can turn regular objects like this aluminum foil here into airplanes that can actually fly high in the sky just by sticking a motor on them. And I'd like to thank Landlord Go for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on in the video. Now typically when we think of something that can fly, we usually think of some complex design of an airfoil, the shape of an airplane wing that gives it its lift. But actually the shape of an airplane's wing is much less important than the angle of attack of the airplane. So for example, I have this paper airplane here. In order for this airplane to fly, basically we just have to create more lift than the weight of the airplane. If we can do that, then the airplane's gonna go up. If the force of lift is greater than the force of gravity downward, it's gonna go up in the air instead of down. Now the lift generated on any object is equal to one half times the density of air times the velocity of that object squared times something called the coefficient of lift. So this equation here tells us a few things. If you get something going really fast, you can get it to fly pretty easily and give it enough lift. But another important part of this equation is this coefficient of lift. The coefficient of lift is directly proportional to the angle of the airplane. So if I were to draw a graph of this, and down here were the angle, and this is the coefficient of lift, as the plane starts out flat, the coefficient of lift is low. So as your airplane tilts upward, the graph gets higher. But then it levels off here and starts to go back down as your angle gets too high. And this is called stall. So when the angle is too high, you start to stall because your coefficient of lift starts to drop back down. So that makes things pretty simple. If we want to get something to fly, just increase its angle so that we create a higher coefficient of lift and that should push enough air downwards and so it'll push the plane upward with a greater force than gravity pulling it down. So just keep the angle like this, right? Well, the problem with that is when you tilt up higher like this, it also creates more drag, so it slows you down. And when you slow down, your velocity gets lower and then you don't have enough velocity to keep that lift up. So what's the solution to that? Add a motor. So if I put this motor on anything, I should be able to get it to fly. <laughs> now this is called a PowerUp 4.0. It's connected to my smartphone and I can adjust the speed of each of these rotors here and get it to turn in any direction I want in the sky based on how I tilt my smartphone. Okay, so we're gonna try a few different materials. First, we're gonna try just a paper plate and see if that can fly. And then I'm gonna try some aluminum foil and see if we can actually make a metal plane fly out of this. So first I'm gonna try it with the plane that came with it. It's just a folded paper airplane. So you stick it on here like this. Hey, that works pretty good. Whoa! Look at that! So cool! Whoa! It's so easy to control. I just turn it like this, comes back to me. Whoa! Okay, now I put it on a paper plate. Let's see if this one actually flies. Nope. <laughs> okay, so now I've attached it just to aluminum foil here. Shape it kind of like wings. Let's give it a try and see if it actually flies. So just made out of a little piece of aluminum foil here. So it's actually easier to control this than the paper airplane. See how high we can get it. Whoa, that is so cool. I recovered it from that huge elevation. Oh, 
134 seconds. So what's really cool about this is it was actually able to be controlled better than the paper airplane. I had way better handling with this than I did the paper airplane. I don't know what it is. I think the weight of it, that it just has more stability in the air. So even though this is what the plane looked like, I mean, it's pretty crinkled. You just have to give it a little bit of wings and it can just fly. And I could get it as high as I wanted and even recover it from a tailspin down to the earth. So cool. And I'd like to thank Landlord Go for sponsoring this video. So Landlord Go is a groundbreaking real estate mobile app. It's a really cool game that lets regular people become real estate tycoons with real life properties. For example, you could buy the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, or even any property in your own neighborhood. So you can learn the tricks of the trade and compete with your friends and family and get a hold of the best venues in your area. So you earn rent from each of your properties and build your empire value every day. What's really cool is this game simulates the economy in real life with fluctuating market values that you have to adapt to and decide when to buy and when to sell your properties in stock. So the app contains a 3D map of the real world. It even has an AR mode that lets you see the properties in real life and purchase them in the app. So not only do you get to act like a billionaire with this game, but you also get to learn more about how the real estate market works. So this app is free to play and download, but if you click the link in my description, then they'll start you off with $1 million so you can start your own real estate empire. And thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and also hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.